Hey guys, again from here back with another media uh the media next up uh, Jesus Christ, Path of Hexa video. And um this time we have the new build that I was talking about two days ago. Uh and as you can see it's not a blade vortex build. Now the very, very easy explanation for that build is um that that build sucks. <laughs> I, I really wanted to make it work and I just couldn't. Like um you can see all the gear that I have for it, I mean most of the stuff. And it just it just doesn't work. It's it's really bad. Like um, the full fire conversion blade vortex uh, inquisitor that everyone is playing, it's um, it's played completely differently. It's it's now about stacking power charges and making the build a little bit differently. And the way I wanted it is just no, it's not gonna work. And I don't have 400 divines to make the build work as smoothly as I have it in standard. So I decided to, you know what, I have another thing that can work pretty good on an Inquisitor, and that is cast on crit. Now, this isn't a high-end version, this is something that I just realized, you know what, screw this build, screw this blade vortex shit, we're just gonna try to sell everything else that I have left, and just from that little currency that I have, let's see what can I make out of this build, because... This is solid even in like lower ends for where this build is standing currently, but um, the, the ceiling is like endless. Like you can have insane cast on crit builds and that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, I, I will farm a lot of currency for this build because I'm really excited about it. So the base idea, cast on crit, you're channeling your cyclone and when your cyclone critical strikes through this uh, support, you're going to be casting all of your linked skills because the only skill you have linked is ice spear it will cast ice spear to your enemies nearby and that's gonna that's gonna be the way you're gonna dealing uh, be dealing damage also you have cosprees and you have like 0 0.25 seconds you're gonna be casting ice nova which is gonna be generating you power charges and has calling strike that's really good for bosses but the main idea is this six link here now we are using a skin of the lords because of the global defenses as you can see we are mostly es based so this is a bunch of defense that we're getting we also have unwavering stance it's not the best i like the stun immunity we get from it we, we cannot evade but we wouldn't like we have like barely any evasion so that's not really gonna matter a much better is gonna be iron of will which is like currently it's like 25 percent or even more damage increase for me because we are also stacking strength and intelligence the reason we are doing that is, is because Shaper's Touch is gonna give us a bunch of ES, accuracy rating, mana, again, evasion rating doesn't matter, but the, the other stats are really, are really strong from this, and it's like a good synergy between these two items, and both of them can be acquired rather cheaply. So the main 6 link is gonna be an anomalous ice spear, because 20% quality gives it 2 additional pierces. We're going to be using a Cyclone, a uh, Phantasmal I think is the best one for alt quality, a Cast on Crit, a, an, a Vacant Edit Call Damage Support, Inspiration, and the GMP. Now, GMP could be Greater Multiple Projectiles or one of the alt quality ones. I think it makes, it makes your um, linked skills cost less mana, which is really important at this build because we don't really have a lot of free mana, and uh, if you're going to be casting 8 skills per second, you really need to watch out for your mana cost, and we will talk about that later. Um, again, Cyclone to just hit as many enemies at the same time as possible, so you can crit as much as you, uh, as you can and spam your skills as much as you want. Um, inspiration, again, reduce mana cost and you get extra more, more spell damage. I mean, more elemental damage and more crit chance. Just everything that you need. Pretty, pretty good skill. Cast on crit. Now, a vacant cast on crit is really good because it has a lower internal cooldown. The way this works is you can see in the uh, skill description, in the, like the main, the top part of the skill, it has a cooldown time of 0 0.15 seconds. That is the base cooldown your linked skills will be having, which means you cannot do this any faster. Your skills cannot be used any faster than once every 0.15 seconds. That can be lowered with items like this. We have 19% increased cooldown recovery from our belts and sadly only 5% cooldown recovery from our uh, boots. If we had better rolls we would have more cooldown recovery which means we can use this skill more. 
Um, and then we have Awakened Added Call just for flat damage and uh, skill levels. And that's pretty much about it. The, the mechanic of the cooldown recovery and the uh, and the attack speed is, is really important and it's a bit hard to get down uh, perfectly because as you can see Cyclone has an attack time of 0.13 seconds, this has a cooldown of 0.12 seconds, so you kind of have to match those two together. You cannot attack too fast, is because if you have an attack time which is lower than your cooldown time, you're going to be wasting a lot of procs and you will, even though you have much higher attack speed, you will be losing like 40, 50, even 60% of your DPS, which is just insane. That's why using Path of Building and just calibrating all your uh, skills and stats is the best way to do it. I'm going to be linking some Path of Buildings in the description which have like very high-end characters. Those guys have nailed it down, they have 100% crit chance, they have like 10, 10 procs per second, which is insane. This build has like 6.5 currently, so I need an Awakened uh, cast on crit and some better optimization of attack speed and cooldown recovery. Now with that out of the way, now we get to the other important stat that I wanted to mention, is, which is the mana cost. That's why we're using a Viv Insect. Uh, first of all, it's a very nice place for your discipline, level 26, pretty good. And the other thing is we have minus two mana cost for each corrupted item equipped. Now you want to, most of your items are going to be corrupted by nature. Skin of the Lords, always corrupted. Shaper's Touch, we need the attack crit uh, implicit, which is means it's gonna be corrupted um, but the rest of the items you can corrupt yourself now for some reason like for some pieces cosplay is very easy to get corrupted ones because any everybody wants to get a plus one projectile on it which would be the highest dps option um, but if you are on a low budget don't fall for uh, gain a frenzy charge for every 200 mana that just doesn't work for some reason i don't know why it probably has to be like in a different system uh, 25 crit multi, the base implicit perfect um, Crown of the Inward Eye, don't go for any fancy implicits or um, or any fancy enchants because if you're on a low budget just getting the 21% increased life mana global ES is like the best and just corrupt it. Uh, Aegis Aura, it's an expensive shield show uh, so you shouldn't really be trying to corrupt it yourself with a Val Orb. Now what you want to do is go to your Beast Cherry, uh, go to the Menagerie and buy Krakik Vassals because those beasts guarantee you the option to, I don't have any now because I used all of them, are gonna give you a crafting option to corrupt to 30% quality and that's why I've uh, done with both of my shield and boots. That is a guaranteed way that you're going to have corrupted items without breaking them and granting you mana cost reduction, which is just perfect. Um, on my belt I just did a, um, did a wall orb, hoping it would not break, it didn't. Uh, and these two items I don't have corrupted because I, I don't wanna, I don't have a good backup of them because as I've said I used ev like every little last bit of currency that I have for these so I, I really wanna just keep these because I feel like we're in a pretty good uh, shape we have uh, 10 mana cost which is just, you know, it's perfectly fine by me um, now let's see in the Cospreys, we have just Calling Strike, Power Charge, Vice Nova. It's just basic, it's gonna be casted like 4 times a second, gonna give us Power Charges if we wouldn't get them any other way, and gonna have Calling Strike against bosses, pretty good. Uh, in the Aegis Aurora, we have a Mark on Hit, Assassin's Mark, Arcane Surge, I don't even, I'm not sure if Arcane Surge even works, but Mark on Hit is, you don't even have to link it to a skill which is gonna hit, it's just any hit is gonna proc this and then you're gonna have Assassin's Mark pretty good against bosses or some bigger enemies that survive your initial burst which is gonna be you know some weird expedition monster with like five rare mobs five rare mods on it or something mm, the boots it's pretty simple i try to go for as much es as possible 30 movement speed dexterity and try to get some decent implicits on it i got cooldown recovery five percent is not that much you can get 10 percent with the highest tier and brittle ground which gives me two percent flat crit uh, against an enemy. Pretty useful, but I don't feel like it's it's gonna be handy all the time. It's just like maybe if I'm fighting a boss could be could be something. Shaper's touch, you need an as high of a um, attack crit as possible. You don't need to worry about spell crit because first of all, um, Ice Spear is gonna be guaranteed crit with this much crit stacking. 
and your attack speed is the only thing that matters anyway that's the more attack crit you have the more you're gonna proc your ice spears mm, belt is just as much strength as you can get because it's gonna give you es and mana and if you have the iron will that's gonna give you spell damage which is again pretty pretty neat um it's it's weird that astromantis is actually like the best in slots uh amulet that you can have just simply with the amount of uh, stats that you can get out of it is crazy. And then I have anointed Charisma for like some mana reservation and non-curse aura effect. Pretty good. Hmm. Also the 100% increased global defenses is going to help because we are, using, um, we are using Determination, which is going to give us a bunch of armor. And since we have Aegis Aurora, we're going to be recovering 2% 2% of this armor's ES every single time we block. And we are block capped for both attacks and spells, thanks to Tempest Shield. Now, with just a little bit of into the auras that we're using, we're also using Precision, because we want to have a high hit chance and a high crit chance. And if I deactivate my Precision, as you can see, I have 97 and 88% hit chance, and only 39% crit chance. But if we do this, I have guaranteed hit chance against most mobs and 43% um, crit, which is really important. Hatred, just a general cold damage multi. Straight up DPS increase, nothing to explain here. Determination, more armor. And then I have Tempest Shield for the block and the shock immunity. I have a Defiance banner. I just bought this because I realized that I was missing it. It's. Um, going to be more armor and evasion rating if i disable this uh it's it's giving me roughly 1000 or 1.5 thousand uh, armor which is you know it's it's free 1.5k armor i don't know why you wouldn't take it and then we have molten shell obviously it's an extra 4k armor pretty useful and it's like 4.8k shield if we have granite flask up it's 36k armor and 7k uh, shield pretty pretty strong and I feel like we are already pretty tanky, even though only 4.5k ES. This, this build feels much, much tankier than, um, than either of the two builds that I've played earlier this league. And then what else do I have that could be interesting? Yeah, I have a Flame Dash, straight up movement speed, just phase run with Arcane Surge. I could put something here, like if I change the socket colors, I could have a Cast on Death portal, because at the end of the day we're talking about me. And I'm gonna die a lot, no matter what. Even if it's like a super easy, just unavoidable, like like in a situation where you just wouldn't die, I somehow managed to die in that too. It's just, you know, it's gonna happen. You could also use a Dying Sun when it comes to the flasks, because of the extra proj, it's always good with just any builds that's using Ice Spear. So right now I'm just using any random flask with uh, increased crit chance during. So I try to get to as close to 100% as, as I can. With the current setup, I think I have like 85. If I get a better shaper touch, it can push me to around 90%. And then I need to find a way to just fix it to 100. I have a bleed immunity flask. It's a diamond flask with uh, charge on crit and reused at the end of the flask effect and some extra LE res. So this is gonna, if you press it at the beginning of the map, it's gonna up, be up all the time. I have a Quicksilver Flask with, uh, with a spell damage leash that's ES and increased effect. Adjacent Flask used, meaning if I use this, it's gonna use this and it's gonna use this as well. So it's all three are gonna be active throughout the entire map. And uh, Granite Flask with more armor and again adjacent Flask used, so it's gonna be all three are gonna, all three of them are gonna be proccing at the same time. Now we can take a look at the skill tree, which is fairly simple. We just come uh, and pick this up because of some strength int, uh, more ES, more armor, pretty pretty decent node. I take this currently because of the increased attack and cast speed, but I don't take this because having this is minus 200k DPS, having this is plus 80,000 DPS. It's The current setup is weird, it's just I have to take it as it is. We take these nodes, this is gonna get us to 75% block, this is some block for both attack and uh, spell damage and some nice uh, auras, power charge, dual socket, 
my jewels are gonna be looking something like this in the beginning trying to get as much crit chance um, crit multi and the mana cost of skills those are like the three important stats that i have all of my uh, jewels some armor max es heavy res aura up stuff this, this is gonna be my next no, next point probably with aura effect and i have aura effect in the mastery too uh, crit obviously again shield and es node now this is a cold large cluster with um Call to the core and prismatic heart. Uh, call to the core is uh, basically good for stat stacking and cold damage. This is ES, I mean uh, elemental damage and auras. Uh, the other cluster setup is just the same. And here I have uh, medium cluster jewels. All of them are going to be looking the same. It's a repeater and eye to eye. This is to get some attack, attack and cast speed and projectile damage. And this is more projectile damage if the enemy is nearby. So that's that's huge. We have like, this is 60% and we have like 250%, 240% projectile damage extra because the enemy is going to be standing nearby at all times. We have two small cluster jewels with a 6% mana reservation efficiency. And one of them has uh, discipline mana reservation efficiency and the other one has hatred. So we can actually afford those auras because those would be a little bit expensive. We have a Militant Faith with a High Templar Dominus and Ellie Damage per Devotion and Defense from Shield Devotion stacking for this This is node. Uh, this would be Hexmaster without it, uh, but it transfers into more spell damage per power charge. And you have to make sure that the Militant Faith you're going to be using doesn't transform this, um, this power charge node. Because let's just say this, this was the one that I used before. And if we swap them out, you see it's no longer a power charge node, it's a minimum endurance charge for at least 150 devotion, which we obviously don't have and it's not even that useful. This is going to be the same, more power charge, I mean more spell damage per power charge, and now it's an actually like max power, max power charge node. And I, I, I realized I'm so stupid. This is the reason why you cannot have frenzy charges, okay? I'm stupid. Don't 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 laugh at me, please. I just realized it. I'm dumb. <laughs> this is some int stacking and uh, all attributes for the mastery. Again, the same cluster, double cluster jewel setup. We have a energy shield on hit while affected discipline. Um, Watcher's eye. Again, I to I repeater, I to I repeater. Another crit multi ma reduced mana cost and uh, cold and lightning res. Uh, Viridan jewel. We have CI, so we cannot die to chaos damage because we simply, uh, if we're gonna be not taking uh, chaos damage, but we have one life. But I feel like with the current ES setup, it's 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 fine. Here's another crit node. You could take these two crit multi nodes instead. Another max power charge, another jewel socket with mana cost, crit multi, and um, global cold res and some accuracy because I was like, yeah, I need some more crit chance. Um, the reason you don't see any elemental pen stuff, because you could be like, oh, but you could have enchanted your boots for um, elemental pen if you haven't killed recently, but if, if this is so good boss killer. If you take a look at uh, this node, Inevitable Judgment, at the Inquisitor, uh, critical strikes ignore enemy monster elemental res. It doesn't matter how much res the enemy monster has, it's not gonna take into account. Like, the enemy could have 100% cold res, but the enemy could also have minus 100% cold res, it's gonna count it as zero anyway. So getting elemental pen is actually a useless stat. Like, you could have uh, anything else instead. We take, uh, like, as you can see, this part, this for increased elemental damage taken on the enemies and less elemental damage taken on you. This is just making you tankier and deal more damage. And we have Battle Mage with added spell damage to your, um, like this adds uh, 83 to 190 uh, call damage is adding, is getting added to our spell damage. And you could technically take like this part because it would give you a bunch of regen, but you're losing out on so much damage instead. So I think this is my, this is my way to go. And uh, what else did I want to, what else did I want to say? Damn, I don't know. I, I feel like, yo, also, if you have some more levels, you could get a Divine Shield because you're going to be recovering a bunch of ES from physical damage uh, hits. 
as you could see, I had like almost 40,000 armor. So that is going to be a lot of uh, ES recovery. Now we're going to be doing a little bit of a showcase. This is just a like Minotaur map. I just started doing these because I feel a bit more confident about how the build stands, but uh, we'll see. I might dive horribly during this map showcase, which is going to be kind of embarrassing. But as you can see, it's 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 quite good now. Like during the f like I spent like five hours trying to fix this build from yesterday to today because it was really embarrassing that my Blade Vortex build was like non-functioning. Like literally nothing was happening. It was it was dying to almost anything. It couldn't keep up uh, RF. It was struggling with um, with killing enemies. It, it it was really bad. And I was like, oh fuck, I need to I need to revert this build. I could play cast on crit, nice. And I made this build, put together the items and everything, and it's like, I have even less damage and even less survivability, and I'm like, oh fuck, are you kidding me? It's like, dude, no way, this build is gonna be even worse than my than my Blade Vortex. But it, it just needed a little bit of fine tuning, and I spent like, as I said, like hours in battle building, trying to see what I could be doing differently on my budget. And just, you know, what I could be doing differently. But, you know, as you can see, I figured it out because I'm smart. <laughs> and, I can, and I can copy other people's build for less currency. <laughs> but, um, yeah. The upgrades that you could be getting for this build are quite expensive once you get uh, past this baseline where I'm currently at right now. So you, you're, you're looking at upgrades like which go into the multiple like 5, 10 plus divines each. Getting, a, getting an Iron Veil uh, skin of the Lord is going to be 4 divines. A plus 1 projectile Cospreys is going to cost you 6 plus divines. And I haven't checked what the prices of uh, Awakened GMP and Awakened Cast on Crit are. But uh, you can bet your ass that it's gonna cost you a lot of money because those are those are expensive jewels usually, and I feel like it's gonna be the same. I picked up Speed Shrine. I wonder if that's gonna mess up my attack rate and everything. Make sure we don't die to that very obvious one shot. And as you can see, we are tanking pretty good. Like we can just face tank this entirely. Uh, not. Not anymore, rip. <laughs> you could you could get unlucky. Uh, like now. The there are there is obviously some DPS increase that you could get. <laughs> Damn it! I don't have a cast on death. No. Anyway, the the the, the build works. Okay, just don't face tank everything. <laughs> You're gonna be fine. This is such a long walk back. Oh my god. Uh, kill me. <laughs> Dude, this sucks. This build sucks. This is the worst build I've ever played. Just kidding. No, don't, don't, don't take me seriously on that one, please. Uh, what, what I've seen from yesterday's upload, I mean like two days ago upload, is that this... The, the, the video which I made like a week ago, which I spent like... 20 plus hours editing and putting all the footage together, scripting and everything. It got like 250 views, 250 views. And the unedited rumbling while I was, you know, a little tipsy. You could probably easily see it that I had a beer there. It it, it got like 2.5k views in like the first day, which was like, dude, come on. Is this... <laughs> is this really that good? <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I honestly can't tell if it's just like better for the algorithm i had a better um i had a better thumbnail plus title combo maybe maybe i did maybe no one gives a crap about me talking about poe lore which and i can understand that it's it it happened to be very boring um what you need to be paying attention for in expedition is to not take enemies cannot take cold damage and enemies cannot take critical strikes because those two mods just kill your build entirely. You can check it here and you can check it on the individual remnants, but we didn't get it so it's gonna be good. And if I die here I'm gonna be shamed forever. <laughs> Make sure you use your 
Oh my god, these enemies are tanky as fuck. Uh, thanks to having that uh, like 20, 30 ES on hit from our Watcher's Eye, we can survive things like this. With the amount of enemies that we're hitting currently, it's it's like thousands of HP regen per second. Thanks to that uh, symbol, like two Divines Watcher's Eye. Which is crazy. So as you can see, you know, the some higher end builds are going to have obviously way more clear and way more damage. But for like the budget that I have for this, which is, you know, under under 10, like around 10 Divines probably is great. Like I'm, I'm feeling really great about this build, how it stands currently. Because I know I could be spending a lot more currency on it. And we just calling strike, easy. I, I really had like a, a half second of spinning on him and he would have been dead. God damn it. Anyway. <laughs> so this, this is the current state of my new build. And... And yep, I don't really have anything else to say. In case you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments or in my Discord. It's GameFan, hashtag 6655. And um, yeah, see you in the next video, guys. Bye!